Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And this is a part four of your AWS automation with Python Boto 3 and Lambda function. All right. So everything is documented as you already have the link to that. So you can go through the documentation as and when you require. Okay. So as I already told in the introduction, so it is the part four of our, uh, you know, automation with Boto 3 Python. So in this video, we are going to discuss some of the important concepts of your Boto3. Okay, so there are few concepts here, right? We have session, we have resource, we have client, meta, collections, waiters, paginators. So these are the concepts that we have in Python Boto3. So don't worry, we will go through one by one. For this particular video, we are restricting ourselves to these three session, resource and client. All right. So in the next coming videos, we can discuss about meta collections, waiters and paginators. All right. So <clears throat> first things first, let us understand what is session. OK, so to understand session, if you just know what is AWS management console. So when you work manually, so you will open AWS management console, right? So in simple words, it is just your AWS management console, right? You are accessing the AWS management console programmatically. That's all right. So if you see here code snippet, the highlighted one is your session, right? You have AWS underscore management underscore console equal to Boto3. We are opening a new session. Basically, if you open your AWS console, this is your management console, right? So this is this will be your new session, right? So that is what we are doing, but programmatically. Right. And we have a profile name called default. But when you log into your AWS management console, you have your own profile name. So whatever the username that you give, that will be your profile name. Right. So that information will be given here. But we don't pass your uh, credentials or the passwords here just because we have done that already. We have configured via our uh, previous steps. Right. So if you had gone through our previous step, we have given uh, AWS configure and provided all our required uh, credentials, AWS access key and AWS secret access key have been provided. Okay, so that is called a session in simple words. Okay, so now what session does? So basically it stores information about your configuration. It can be your credentials of the default user or if you have another user or, and if you if you are using a particular region, all those things will be stored inside the configuration, right? So that information will be stored here. That is our second point. Next third thing, it allows us to create service clients and resources. So when you are working with AWS management console, you will go and navigate to different services and you create resources, right? For example, if you go to EC2, you go ahead and create an EC2 instance. You go to S3 and you create an EC2, uh, S3 bucket, right? So you go to IAM, you create a group or a user or a role, right? Similarly, this will allow, this management console is a basic thing which will allow you to create resource or service or client, right? So we'll see what is client, what is resources and all in, in the coming classes, I mean, in the same video, okay? So. Fourth point is that it creates a default session for us when we need it. So whenever we want a default session, it will create a default session for us, right? And fifth one, we can create multiple sessions in the same script. For example, if you just imagine this is your management console. If you want to open the same management console one more time, can you do it? Yes, right? We can do it. See, I'm opening the same management console multiple times. If you want three times, four times, you can open it and you can keep, right? So in the same way, if you want to open multiple management sessions or multiple sessions at the same time, you can do that. So if you see here, the highlighted uh, code snippet here, AWS management console for a default user is this one. I have given the profile name as default. And for a monk, I'm giving the profile name as a monk. Right. So if you have that user in your AWS account, he will also be able to uh, basically using that credentials, you will be able to create resources. Right. So that is the basic idea of your opening your uh, Boto3 uh, multiple sessions in your Boto3. 
okay so don't worry about the other code just worry about the uh, thing that i've highlighted here okay so that is about your session so let me know in the comment if you have not understood anything i'll i'll try to answer that in the next video okay next let us go through our resource and client so we told that we are going to discuss about session resource client in this video so the next thing that we are discussing is uh, resource and client okay so if you have understood session to understand resource and client is really easy okay so after opening management console what will you do you will go to a particular service page right a particular console let's say you want to work with iam so you will click on iam and you open that iam console right like this let's say you want to work with vpc you click on a vpc and open it in a new page right so this is what we do basically so that capability if you want to have if while working programmatically you can get via resources and client right so now you might ask me which one to use whether i should use resource or which one uh, or should i use client right so to answer that let let me uh, you know answer that in the few minutes okay so first understand why we need resource and client we can create particular aws service console example i am console ec2 console and other consoles that you have you can create it using resources and client okay that is what we have defined here okay and you can also specify the region name if you want right so if it's a region related service for example ec2 you can specify the particular region here itself uh, after uh, i am so i am is a global service but if you are working with uh, ec2 and all you can specify the region itself so just uh, uh, provide a comma here and open uh, just say region is equal to uh, in inside double quotes just mention the region name like us east one or us west two something like that okay so you can specify there itself and just to give you an example of a resource object so there is very slight difference between your uh, resource and your client okay so just look into the code that i've highlighted here so iam underscore console basically the first line we are you know using it to create a management console we have created a session here after creating session we are creating a iam console here so to create iam console you are using iam underscore console underscore resource is equal to so you if you want to go to iam you need management console that's what i'm doing here aws underscore management console dot so which resource or which service i'm using i'm using i am so i'm giving i am here okay so this is the code example for your resource object similarly if you want to check for the client object so this is how you do it everything is same instead of resource we provide client here right so now you might ask me which one should i use whether should i use resource or should i use client right so to answer that question so you can use any one depending on your use cases and there are some restriction i'm going to talk about that here in the same video wait till the end okay so first understand what is a resource so if you see here resources resource is a high level object oriented service access it is very high level okay and so resource objects are only available for few aws services so this the whatever the thing that you are seeing right so the resources is only available for only few objects or few aws resources not all resources have resource object right so how to check so which resources you have a resources section or a resource object how to check that right you can do it you can check it via programmatically also okay so let me show you how to do that okay so if you see here so this is what the code is so let me copy this snippet basically i'm just copying the uh, snippet that opens aws management console okay so i'll not use this uh, vs code for this one what i'll do is i'll open a command prompt in my windows okay so basically i'm going to uh, first run i'm i'm going to use python here i'll just type in python I'm inside my Python uh, right interpreter right now. Let me import Boto3. I'll just type in import uh, Boto3. 
okay i'm i'm importing water 3 imported so let me just give my aws management console here okay so i'll just type that one and i'll hit enter now i have my aws management console right so to see what are the different services that i have i'll just say dir so dir is a function that uh, you know your python provides so let's open the management console okay so let me type in here let me go back a bit and I'll paste it here and I'll hit enter. Okay. So here we have many things, right? We, we are speaking about client. We have, uh, re you have resources, we have region name, all these things are there. You have profile name. So all these things are there, but our intention is to get what are the available resources, right? So what are the resources that are available and which are accessible via resource object, right? So to do that, so I'll just have to type in print with uh, AWS management console. I need to open management console first. Okay. Dot and I need to get all the available resources. Okay. I'll just copy that and I'll paste it here with the press braces and I'll hit enter. Right. So if you see here, only these resources have resource object. So CloudFormation has resource object, CloudWatch has resource object, DynamoDB, EC2, Glacier, IAM, OpsWork, S3, SNS, and SQS. Only these services has your uh, resource object. Let me copy that and I'll paste it here. Okay, after demo, I'll just hit enter and I'll just paste whatever I got it there. Okay, so don't worry about the codes and all. So this code is made available to you in the uh, GitHub repository link that I've provided in the previous uh, video itself, right? So if you go to this link, you will be able to find this one. Okay, so after that is done, I hope you understood uh, what we just demonstrated here. So I'll just copy this one. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and paste it here. Okay, so these are the services that has got your resource object. I'll just mention resource object available. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. Now, next thing is client. Client is a low level access, low level service access. In simple terms, so the output or the response that we get in case of client is dictionary which needs more effort in implementing the boto3 script so you need to convert the you need to get the dictionary and you need to it requires manual effort and manual effort as in you need to be very strong in your coding in order to work with the dictionary you have to understand what is dictionary how to what are key value pairs how to get the value for a key uh, how to directly get values without getting your keys all those things you will have to understand right so whereas your resource it is very simple uh, because you can get the you know get the result by just using some dot operations right so we just if you see here the same example if you see here what we did is we just got this list of all the all the resources by just giving some code right so we we gave dir aws management console and we provided get all the resources that has got um, if you see this snippet so we just use dot operations get available resources right so this way you can get all the resources but whereas if you want to do the same thing in your client it is dictionary uh, basically and it needs more effort okay so if you see here the next point is very important all operation that we see in AWS management console can be done using client whereas resource doesn't guarantee you that and some operation might not be supported with your resource object right so that is very thing very important thing here so resource it is only available for few resources and it is not all the operations that we do is supported with your resources for example if i go to iam I have access analyzer, I have policy, I have service control policies. So resource object might not help you with all the things present here. That is what the meaning is. So some might be some uh, options might be missing in your resource object. 
right so that is what the meaning is so in this scenario you will i prefer going with a client right client object is better so let's say if you have already started using resources and you have now found that some things are not missing in your resource object then what to do so if you do not have some operations in resource we can enter into client by using meta concept and let us talk about meta in the next coming videos okay so that is our next thing right meta we will be discussing later in the same series we are going to discuss right so now i just told that it requires more more time and more efforts if you want to work with client right so let's see how much more effort is needed compared to your resource and your client right so let me go back to my vs code here okay so if you see this is the code that i have written okay if you see this i am opening my management console here by providing aws management console this is just a variable name you can use whatever you want so just to understand it clearly i've given the actual name that we use right aws management console i am opening here with the session i am management i am console i am opening it resource with resource if you check so resource uh, i am was supported with the resource block right if you see here i am is here i am is here so i can use resource so you need to note that also only things that are supported you can only use them right so i am using resource object here and i am uh, giving the resource name as i am okay in the same way I'm, client is available for all the resources at least most of the resources uh, we have client so i am using client and i am opening the same i am console right if i have to list the users with your uh, your resource object it is just a for loop so i am going over uh, each user and i am getting the name by using this one i am console dot users dot all basically i am getting all the users name right so by uh, iterating one by one so it is we are just using dot operations here no nothing complicated complication here right but if you want to do the same thing for the client if you see here i am a console that are used uh, client you will have to get the list of users by this one and that is a dictionary basically so inside that dictionary i need to get into users key and i need to get the username right so that is a long procedure first i need to get the list of users that will be in a dictionary format and inside that dictionary i need to get my users like key name is uh, users and inside users i need to get my username as the value right this is how you get your value in your client object whereas in resource object is it is really simple right users dot all that is all you have to do right so now let me run this script and show you over the result so i will just run it okay let me expand it a bit okay if you see i got the result boto3 user and yashwant boto3 user and yashwant so i'm getting two times because i'm using two objects here one is resource and the other one is uh, you know client so i'm getting the response from both of them but the only complexity we have is you just need to note this one in client object we have uh, many things to do but in resource object it is really simple but not all services has got your resources and you have to look into this one so what resources supports resources resource object and what doesn't support resource object you have to check it here right so i'll just highlight this one because that is really important you can just check this document and you will you can uh, you know get insights from it okay so that is all i had for this particular video uh, i hope you enjoyed learning alongside with me if you're liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it among your friends so next class will be going more into this concept of boto3 and also we'll have a demonstration on how to create resources in between okay so that's it for today's video thank you and i'll see you in the next one